fasting and prayer I want to thank those of you who participated and those of you who have prayed I want to welcome especially the members of Pentecostal Cathedral and Pentecostal Sanctuary I hope you did your assignment during these days of fasting and I want you to send me those assignments we paused our study on prophecy to focus on this Lord. has truly been a fruitful exercise and we give God thanks and I want to share a few things with you today as we look to God as we seek to reset and we seek to reboot in order to fulfill what God has for us for the last mile of the way. We have turned the curve, brothers and sisters, and we're heading to the finish line. May we finish strong. As the church started strong, God wants it to finish strong. The church started on fire, and God wants it to end on fire. And I believe he has afforded us this moment of quietness and seclusion. He has afforded us these moments of isolation so that we can hear his voice. Because we have been so busy preparing sermons. We have been so busy organizing events. We have been so busy looking about the cares of this life that the voice of God has been drowned out and he has now an opportunity to speak to us. May we open our hearts to him and may our spirits be emptied so that God can fill us. We look to him in Jesus' name. I'd like to sing a hymn I've been I don't know why, how you think I've been doing with the singing lately, but when you do what you can, God will can what you can't. Amen. Hallelujah. Thou my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me. All along life's pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee. Close to thee, close to thee, all along life's pilgrim journey, Savior, let me For ease or worldly pleasure, not for fame, my life shall be gladly with I toil and suffer. Only let me. Close to Thee, Jesus, I want to be close to Thee, forever close to Thee, all along, 
Life's pilgrim journey. of the crowd it's very easy to lose track of Jesus as his parents did when they were coming from Jerusalem they traveled days the company was so good among friends and families that they did not even realize that Jesus was not close to them but having established a pattern during these moments of isolation and lockdown, may we develop habits that will become a part of the rest of our life. Brothers and sisters, if we do what God wants us to do in this season, the rest of our life will be the best of our lives. I want to challenge the people of God today. Let us ascend into the hills of the Lord. And let us go into the holy place. By cleansing and sanitizing our hearts, our soul and our spirit. So that we can get close to him. God bless you brothers and sisters. I truly appreciate Amen. The opportunity to share with you. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Going to pray. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit will speak in these moments. He will speak to us individually. He will speak to us collectively as local assemblies. He will speak to us as apostolics. Hallelujah. I believe there are some things that God wants to say to us. That we have got to empty our minds of our preconceptions. Empty our minds of our faulty assumptions. We've got to empty our mind of our past hurts, our past failures, and our past disappointments. And lay our heart on the altar and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Because for this last mile of the way, we want to end strong. We want to end on fire. We want to end in love. We want to end in long suffering. Being tender-hearted one with another. Let us pray. Hallelujah. 
O Lord, our God, you are our Savior, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Our eyes are upon you, God. Oh, Jesus, our eyes are upon you. We confess, dear God, that we have not always done right. We confess that we have not always done good. But you know it, our frame, that we are humans. So God, in the name of Jesus, let your cleansing blood flow over our souls. In this moment, God, Position us that we can hear your voice. Speak to your people, Lord. Speak to your people. Speak to your people, Lord. Let your voice be heard individually. Let your purpose for each assembly be fulfilled and that be manifested. Make your path clear to our eyes. That God, we will step out of this corona season and step into revival. In the name of Jesus, commit your people into your hands. Pray for Sister Bennett this morning who is not well. And in the name of Jesus, I invoke your healing power upon her. That she'll arise. Out of that bout, in Jesus' name, be made whole. Oh, Lord, I pray for our elderly members, God. Some of them can't even communicate via this medium. But in the name of Jesus, like you alone knows, reach down and touch that place on the inside that no human can touch. And Lord God, let the comfort of your Holy Spirit be felt in their space wherever they are right now. In the name of Jesus, be gracious unto us, God. Cause your face to shine upon us. And give us peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We worship God. We honor his name. We give him praise. In this moment, amen, this devotional hour, amen, we look to God. Hallelujah. World needs us, church. And I trust that we will prepare ourselves and we will become the director at the crossroad to direct the chaos. Hallelujah. The traffic lights have gone out and there's chaos at the crossroad. And we need to step in and give direction. So may God help us and empower us. I want to share a few thoughts with you today. The first day of our fasting, we focused on our personal relationship. We focused on our family and building back the broken down walls of the family altar and family consecration, to reconnecting with God and establishing a schedule and a rhythm, a spiritual rhythm. And I trust that. Before the government releases the restrictions, we would have entered into a spiritual rhythm. I encourage persons who have not yet done so to have a personal closet in your home, a space where you go to pray daily, where daily you appear before the presence of God kneeling before him. Hallelujah. 
we recognize through this season that the reason why many people don't fast is not because they have to go to work but because the desire is not there but may we have created a hunger and a thirst for spiritual things that we will carry through amen the season to come amen we have focused on the local assembly and changes and adjustments that will have to be made as we step out of the corona season and we want to step out in a place where we are ready to do what God wants us to do. So let me speak today a little about the church. The church. The church is a unique body. The body which represents the kingdom of God upon the earth today. The church is the body today that God works with and works through. The world of sinners who are not in touch with God cannot be directed by God. God used circumstances and events to manipulate sinners. But for us, the church of God, he uses his spirit to lead and guide us. So the Bible said, they that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It says that we not only must have the Spirit, but be led by the Spirit. Now, the church is a body that Jesus has special interest in because his name is upon the church. His blood runs through the church and his Spirit is the life flow of the church. He has a special interest in the church. That's why the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So, I want to look at the purpose of the church. It's unique because God had Israel. In the Old Testament, he manifested his power through them. Through them, the heathens around knew that there was only one God. Through them, the heathens around could see the workings of God among a people who called upon Yahweh, Jehovah. But the Jews, having lost their witness, having blindness covered their eyes, the church was established and God is now working through the church to accomplish his work upon the earth. And what is that work? That work is the work to save sinners. The medium through which God saves sinners and develop them through Christ-like maturity is the church. And God wanted to save Saul. He met him on Damascus Road. And Saul said, Lord, what would you have me to do? The Lord says, go down and find Ananias. And he will tell you what to do. The church has that mandate and the ministry of reconciliation is now with the church. If the church don't do it, it won't be done because we are the body of Christ. If the church don't say it, it won't be said because we are the body of Christ. 
If the church don't go there, it will not be visited because we are the body of Christ that God works through. So his purpose is to use the church as a medium through which sinners will be saved and through which they will be developed to Christ-like maturity. That's the purpose of the church, brothers and sisters. We must not lose focus on that purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't misunderstand me, but the church is not here to be a social entity. The church is not here brothers and sisters, to save or to change the world. The church is here to rescue sinners out of the world. The world cannot be saved. The world is under a condemnation. The world is under divine judgment. They, are, they have been sentenced, the world has been sentenced and is waiting for its moment when that sentence will be executed. Jesus prayed. He said, I pray not for the world, but I pray for them that you have given me out of the world, that you will keep them. So, brothers and sisters, the essential purpose of the church is to seek the lost, the saved sinners, to develop them to Christ-like maturity and to care and serve the body of Christ. Serve the members of the body. He has given the church ministries that is to serve the body. The ministry is not for self-exaltation. The gifts of the Spirit is not for our own furtherance of our own repetitions and ministries. It is for the service of the body of Christ. And so, let us understand that's the purpose of the church. This body of people that have been in united through the bloodline of Jesus and through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. By His Spirit we are baptized into one body. The church is not something we can join. Church is a kingdom we are born in. The sons cannot be made, sons are born. We become a part of the church by being born of water and of the Spirit. We're born into the kingdom of God. We can't join the kingdom of God. So Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Brothers and sisters, God has placed in the church varying ministries to help us to cope with the adversities of life to help us carry out our mandate. And he has organized the church into local assemblies. And uh, the local assemblies play a critical role in God's leading and administration of the body. We see in Revelation chapter 2 verse 3, Jesus' last message was a message to seven churches in Asia. He directed these messages to individual assembly because each assembly is unique. Each assembly is different. And... Uh, Jesus 
recognize the uniqueness of each assembly. Recognize the uniqueness of the environment they operate in. He recognized the uniqueness of the resources that they have. So the seven message to the seven churches in Asia were direct and were relevant to the need of each local body. Hallelujah. Now, these seven letters were sent to seven historical local assembly. Their message has relevance to the church of all age. But let's understand that God deals with assemblies through leaders that he places over them. And it is the responsibility of each assembly to see God and to understand God's divine mandate for each assembly. Every assembly cannot do everything. We must understand what the mandate is for where we are. And I speak specifically to the assemblies of Pentecostal Cathedral and Pentecostal Sanctuary. We can't just look around and say, well, a bus ministry works over there, so let's try it here. Or such a ministry works there, let's try it here. Else we could be chasing the wind. What we must do is seek God and understand our divine mandate. What are the ministries, God, that will create the greatest impacts in this environment and this space that you have sent us? Lord Jesus, what are the ministries you want us to develop for the different demographics in this environment hallelujah you see brothers and sisters the three critical elements that facilitate the works of the church worship fellowship witness these are the areas of our involvement that manifests the apostolic mandate. True worship unto God. True fellowship one with another. True witness to the world around us. And everything we do should be channeled and be speaking to one of these Dynamics, true worship, true fellowship, true witness. And they continued steadfastly with the apostles' doctrine and with breaking of bread. Going house to house, having fellowship one with another. Worshipping God. And the Lord added to the church daily. Such as is to be saved. We must not be pressured brothers and sisters. About the adding to the church. What we must focus on. Is. The environment, creating the environment so that God can add to the church. When we do the right things, God will add to the church. When we do our own thing, we conflict with the harvest. We conflict with God's 
flow. We want to get into the divine flow and not be caught swimming against the tide. Swimming against the divine tide. We want to be able to ride the divine tides. We want to be able to catch the flow that will energize us and empower us to do what God wants us to do. And he will add to the church when we do the right things the right way. Hallelujah. I encourage us today as we pray. We will pray, God, what do you want us to do as an assembly, as a church, Lord? We put the programs on the table, God. We put our offices on the table. We, we put, Lord God, all our ministries and agendas on the table. All of pastors' great ideas and great vision. God, it's now on the table. Expunge what you don't need around, oh God. But put the pieces together for us, Lord. Oh God, let us move with the divine flow. Let's catch that divine rhythm. Hallelujah. March to that divine beat. Let's march to heaven's drum beat. As the general of the army, Jesus Christ, give the orders, we move with one accord, left, right, left, right, in one beat. There's no force of darkness that will be able to withstand the forward march of the Christian soldiers as we move to the beat of heaven's drumbeat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's consider, brothers and sisters, as we step out of the season of Corona, we are not going to step out as one man band. We are not going to step out. Oh my God. The church needs you. The church needs you, brother and sister. The church needs you. God needs the talent. And he needs the gifts that he has planted in you. The church needs you. Those of you who are university graduates, the church needs you. He didn't just bless you with a university degree and a university education for you to build the financial empire of an entity. What are you doing with it in the church? Teachers, the church needs you. Our Sunday school needs you. You spend hours making lesser plans for the secular school. Do you put the same energy in making a plan for your class of Sunday school students? I think we need to look at our Sunday school model. It's not working, brothers and sisters. It's not working. Oh, as I said yesterday, the church is one of the few places that you can put a boy in. And for 10 years of their lives, have them in the church. And when they reach 20, they pack their bags and walk out and leave it. The gangster get that child for six months. In six months, that child is going to become a gangster for life. But for the grace of God. Hallelujah. We are passing time. We are passing time. Passing time with our children. We need to measure the impact of our action. What impact it is having on others. 
Not just the ability to craft a pretty sermon and preach people happy. They walk back home, lay down on their beds after church, traumatized and depressed. That's not the way God wants it to be. This season come to change, to make change. This season come for change. Hallelujah. So I, I, I'm imploring members of Pentecostal Cathedral, the members of Pentecostal Sanctuary, we're going to lay everything on the altar. going to forgive each other. Put aside the assumptions and put aside a man of misguided philosophies. Put aside some of the traditions that we hold so close to our hearts. Amen. And just open our mind and say, breathe on me, Jesus. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. I want to be right. I want to be holy. I want to be ready for your return. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Tonight I'll be speaking about unity, faith, and worship. As we position, as we reposition, may we not go back to the way it used to be, but let us look to God for a new day. A new day. Hallelujah. A new day has dawned. Lift your hands and worship God with me. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. He's good and His mercies is everlasting. And His truth endure it to all generations. Lord. We open ourselves to thee. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Oh God, we put the assemblies in your hand. We put the church in your hand. We put the apostolic body in your hand. We put, Lord, our movement in your hand. We want you, God, to lead and guide and direct us. In our local spaces where we minister, God, cause us to understand what is that good and acceptable and perfect will that we may walk in it. Oh, God, touch our movement, United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica. Let your purpose reign and be fulfilled. Touch the leaders, God, the board. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus, cause the minds, O oh God, to be united in your will. O oh God, our Sunday school, O oh God, we need to hear something from you about our Sunday school. O oh God, our children's ministry, we can't go back. Oh God, to being babysitters, passing time with our young people. Oh God, speak to us, speak to us, speak to us. You need to be rebooted, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Show us your way that we may walk therein. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you, brothers and sisters. Next week I will return to our regular Bible studies. Persons have been, amen, requesting or making inquiries of the study and we will be trying to respond to those questions next week God's willing we will be having 
some studies on Zoom so that you can have questions and interact as we study the Word of God. Tomorrow, we will not be having church in the assemblies. For Pentecostal Cathedral, Minister Gardner and the ministers there, they are going to be setting up outside the church and projecting to the community. As you know, the church is in the heart of the community, so they will just put the system out and minister the, to the community. I will meet at 11 o'clock. Meet me online, members of Pentecostal Sanctuary. And join myself and Sister Ellis as we will be having church from home. Amen. Tonight, I'll give you the full schedule of our week's activities and the announcements. Join me tonight at 9 o'clock. We'll be praying for Sister Charmaine Bennett. She's not well, but we believe that the prayer of faith that we pray will raise her up. Keep her in your prayers. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the remaining few moments of the fasting and some of us will end it and just pick it up back tomorrow so god bless you those who have been having one meal per day for the three day you can have a meal this evening and pick up at the fasting and eat tomorrow evening and those of you who have been doing the three days straight remember to break it lightly get back your stomach conditioned amen god bless you enjoy a few minutes of my 